Dr. K, Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is a retired physician and founder of an organization that has become pretty much global called Health Watch USA. Good morning, Dr. K. Uh, good morning, Jack. Do you have any idea when you started uh, Health Watch USA the impact that it was going to have? Well, I really didn't, but we are, uh, I think, having an impact, and this last conference certainly exemplifies that. Yeah, last Tuesday this week. Yeah. yeah. And you had folks from all over the country, didn't you? Well, all over the world, yes. Yeah. Most of our speakers were from outside of the United States, with the exception of myself and Deputy Secretary Carolyn Clancy. It was a very good event, and it really does put things in perspective. And to be honest with you, Jack, the United States really is falling behind as far as us approaching both public health and this virus specifically. Now, that's not good news. Now, we already have questions for you. The first one is, what's the doctor's opinion on why the CDC hasn't recommended that the U.S. border be shut down? Well, I don't know, but I tell you, Jack, throughout the last year, as you know, we've come up with recommendations far ahead of what's officially been coming out of the federal government. We've had difficulties just getting the CDC to recognize the Delta variant as a variant of concern. And as you know, two weeks ago, we were on your radio show trying to sound the warning about the Delta variant that the data shows yeah. it's spreading in the U.S., and there was silence. Uh, we finally gave an oral public comment at the CDC and then followed that with a infectious control article in Infection Control Today. And day after that, the CDC declared this a variant of concern and gave out a public advisory, which we had stressed that they did during our public comment. So, yeah, I, I think that our approach to this is very lackadaisical. Well, there's a new story that we just heard, I mean, minutes ago, that sell the Delta strain it represents 10% of U.S. cases. That's really significant. Well, yes, it's skyrocketing, and that data is somewhat delayed. If you go to Outbreak.info, which is a site that is funded by NIH and CDC, you have even a higher percentage of the cultures coming in, which are the Delta variant. And if you're vaccinated and you have both doses, you have good protection against this variant. The problem is... Too many people in the United States are not fully vaccinated. Look at what United Kingdom is doing. They have much less deaths per capita than we do. I think the whole country uh, yesterday had 19 deaths. That would be just for population less than 100 deaths in the United States. They've delayed the reopening. Travel bans are still up. Social distancing is still being encouraged. They're not allowing theaters or nightclubs to open. There's social distancing, which is limiting restaurant capacity. They have put off their reopening, and that's because of the Delta variant. And I should also add that in areas where the Delta variant is spreading in the UK, they're recommending that everybody be tested twice a day. And again, here we're just kind of ignoring it, opening up, you know, hoping it's going to go away. And that's not really good for the public. We need to be a little bit more diligent on public safety. Might it not happen? Yes, but we need to be on the safe side. Another text on our Auto Tech Service text line. My seven-year-old grandson's mother has started chemotherapy. Are there exceptions on the age criteria for kids under 12? Right now, there is not. That's still experimental. I would talk to your doctor about that. Certainly Norton's children's would be up on this, and I think they're doing some experiments with the vaccines. You may be able to get your child through a vaccination program that's, you know, an experimental one. But right now, it's not blanketly given out to children under 12. Now, I should add that a big area of misinformation is, oh, kids don't get the virus. That's not true. The children do get the virus, and they spread the virus. In fact, children above the age of nine may be the biggest group for spreading the virus. In Germany, one of our presenters was stressing how schools were actually a focal point of spreading the virus and outbreaks. It doesn't mean the children are going to get as sick or die as often as elderly. We know they don't, but they still can spread the infection. So with the Delta variant, we need to be very, very cautious. And Jack, it's so frustrating because if everybody would embrace vaccinations, we would be out of this thing. And that's what's so frustrating right now. Uh, Matt wants to know if uh, you think that uh, the WHO is compromised by China. 
Well, it, WHO is a political entity, as unfortunately I think many of our federal agencies are also. And when you say compromised by China, not to the extent where it's not functioning and can't make advisements, but it definitely does create a bias. All of the countries that belong to the WHO donate money to the WHO. It creates a bias in what they give out and their advisements. And that's one of the reasons why we need to be active in the WHO so that we're a counterbalance and our voice is heard. The WHO is the mechanism where countries can come together and get a strategy out on confronting the virus. And if certain countries don't participate, then yeah, it'll become lopsided. So we need to participate in the WHO. That is the forum to use. Whether you like it or not, during a pandemic, that's our best mechanism of addressing it on a worldwide basis. Another question I think you've already answered, but maybe you could go into it a little further. Does the vaccination cover the variants? And you said it did. Is there one product that is better at viruses than another? I mean, at the variants than another? I don't think we have enough data to know if one product is better than another because all the trials are so different than one another and look at different populations. They haven't been really run head on head. And that's one of the things I think does need to get done. But yes, the vaccines are not as effective as with the original or wild type of virus, but their efficacy is around 90%, which is enormously successful for even this Delta variant. And that's provided you get two doses. If you just get one dose of the mRNA vaccine, the effectiveness drops down to around 33%, which at that level, it wouldn't even be approved for usage. So you do need to get both doses. Johnson & Johnson is just a one-shot deal. Are they covered with that? I believe that it also does offer protection, Jack, but that I'm not sure. You need to realize that the Delta variant, this is a new variant of concern that is coming on, and the data is just still coming in. All right, taking a break. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is our fine guest. Uh, you have a question for him, Lane? Actually, Dr. K, I was uh, I was kind of curious. I wondered if you've thought of, thought about this too. It seems to me the same people that nowadays are uh, against being told to get the get the vaccine were complaining about people coming into the country illegally around 2019 who weren't getting vaccines for smallpox and things like that. And that that to me is, seems rather hypocritical. It doesn't make sense to me. I wonder if you had any thoughts on that. Well, yes, I think it is hypocritical. You know, same people who wanted to open up the economy are now doing everything they can do to try to make sure that we can't fully open or we may have a step backwards and more closures. So it is very frustrating. And this is one of the really things that drives me crazy about this disinformation we have been hearing. A lot of it, I think, has been very organized, sometimes from adversaries from abroad and within, to try to create disruption within our country. And believe me, it has done it. We are not doing as well addressing this pandemic as many other industrialized nations. We're about on the level of India and Brazil right now. We still don't have good genomic sequencing and testing for community spread of these variants. We've got a very vaccine hesitant population. Doesn't matter if we have more vaccines per capita than any nation in the world. If we're not getting people vaccinated, it's not doing any good. So it is very frustrating. In a way, I'm trying to sound an alarm, but it's not fatalistic because we have an easy out, get vaccinated. Vaccines work in two ways. One, it protects the individual. In other words, 90% protection, that's good. Plus, if everybody gets vaccinated, community spread goes way down, so it protects the community and makes it much less likely that you'll even come across the virus. And then, by chance, if you do, you've got a 90% protection. So it really works in two methods. And right now, we've only been able to implement the protection for the individual in just part of our population. So we've got a long ways to go in educating people about public health. Yeah, there's misinformation out there. I know you sent me some misinformation. You want to share some of that? Oh, yeah. I mean, we see this all the time. You know, for example... It just drove me crazy last year, everybody calling up. Well, you know, the rates are just going up because testing's going up. You don't hear anybody calling up saying the rates are going down because testing's going down. I mean, it's craziness. And again, that's a problem. 
There is a database by the FDA for reporting called VAERS, which anybody can call up and report. A lot of people who have concerns that maybe this is related to the vaccine, they don't know for sure, they will put that in. People who want to stir up trouble, like people posting on all these crazy things on Facebook, they can put stuff in that database. And so you can't use those raw numbers. That database is just used to look for patterns, and then they're investigated. So you can't say, oh, you know, we've got 2,000 people that have had this problem in VAERS. And there is no check on the quality of that data. It's investigated after it's placed in. And so that has been a huge problem of people who are anti-vaxxers using that database to really discredit the vaccines, when in actuality, investigation of these cases have shown the vaccines to be extremely safe. And the other thing, and we've already talked about this, is that children, although they don't get as sick, they can spread the virus and spread it to their parents and spread it to their grandparents, especially with these new variants. The data coming out with both the alpha variant, which is the UK variant, and the delta variant, which is the double mutation Indian variant, does show it tends to have a predilection to children doesn't mean that they're infected or have more problems than, let's say, an elderly adult, but it's targeting them more than the wild-type virus. So it is a problem. And finally, the last bit of information is that the symptoms from the Delta variant tending to be more upper respiratory, and that maybe go along with it being much more infectious, in that it's more apt to have headaches, sore throat, and runny nose, than the wild type virus. And if you remember the wild type virus, a runny nose was seldom seen. With the Delta variant, it's seen more often. And that may be one of the reasons why it is more contagious. Two words to close out today. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. <laughs> I knew yeah. you were gonna say that. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Jeff.